Is the Jagdtiger any good? Well, thanks to two wonderful replays from Helpres, we're gonna find out if the Jagdtiger is any good. And after this video, you might understand it quite a little bit better if you are on the journey to the Jagdpanzer E100. Now, 4,000 DPM is the main talking point of this vehicle because we can ignore the mobility, it's very slow. Uh, but the gun is very excellent at 4,000 DPM, 460 alpha damage as well. 0.38 accuracy, 1.9 seconds aim time, and it even has 8 degrees of gun depression, so you can play some hull down spots, even though obviously you don't have a turret, which is why I would normally never review this thing, but thanks to these two amazing replays, here we are. So if you're a Yak Tiger fan, tell me down in the comments, what do you love most about this vehicle? The armor right there, look at that. Even with the 276 millimeters of standard penetration on this vehicle, it can't pen its own upper plate. However, with the premium rounds, it's gonna go straight through. I have no idea what the enemy Yagtiger is up to there, camping behind the big rock. The, probably the most well-known rock in the entirety of Blitz, that one right there. There's always somebody camping behind that thing, and every time, somebody is gonna get wrecked. Now, help here is sitting quite far back, sitting passively. Obviously, there are three tank destroyers on the enemy team, the Arcticus and the two ISUs that already were spotted and had to drop off the hill. So you want to play a little bit passively right there. Obviously, this isn't the way I play the game and I want to play the game, which is why I don't concern myself with the vehicle like this most of the time. But the ISU decides to do what I would have done, and that is play aggressively, go forward. The enemy Arctica is still hugging the rock over there, and the other ISU-152 is also pushing forward as well, and obviously that's not a really good idea if you're pushing into a crossfire. If you do push with a tank destroyer, you have to do it with a lot of thought and care, but that is not what is happening right there, and both ISUs now succumb to the pressure right there, and there is the Arctica. Again, this vehicle can't even pen itself with the excellent standard rounds that it does have. The armor and gun on this thing is very good. Obviously, the lower plate is a weak spot, like it is on every single tank in the game, and I don't think I have to ever repeat that again, but yeah, maybe. Here's the thing. No matter what I say in these reviews, if you don't do it in battle, nothing's gonna help, right? Whatever you see in a review, if you don't actually apply those, those things in battle, yeah. So, and if you don't actually play the game, right? You're not going to get good at the Jagdtiger by watching Jagdtiger battles. It's just how you're not good at getting marathons by watching marathons. It doesn't work that way. So get out, play it, understand it as well. This is just a guide of what can be done. And now here, one versus five. No relatively full HP, but now it is time. And this is where a tank destroyer struggles the most. A light tank that gets behind it. But luckily that MX 3090 is so terrible that he just sits there and allows help to just finish him off. He takes a shot there. This is actually what I would have done as well. Take a snapshot because if you have the time to take the shot, aim the shot. But if the shot is currently disappearing, just fire it. It might hit um, because if you wait for him to disappear, he's going to be gone anyway and you don't get the shot. So fire it off while you have the chance and otherwise uh, just you know wait it out you can't get it at all and the yeah here comes a leopard another big problem right there another big medium that can flank this vehicle and help is playing this very well getting his ass up against the house and only seven hp on the leopard which means he gets rammed to death and here comes the ice three they're all playing one by one and the other yak is even capping the base not supporting the rest of his team right here and now obviously the is 3 gets up in front the super pershing still sitting there bouncing off the arctic here comes a shell from the arctic who is a one shot and help has to go for it right now and this is now what would be the t26's prime chance to hunt after the arctic and shoot him in the back now we got the cap is it going all the way to 199 God damn, reset I at 99. This is a epic battle right here. And subscribe for that one and hit the like button. Because this is crazy now. Where is the Super Pershing? Up, up there. Way too late. Didn't come just in time. And now he's too late. And there is nothing he can do. And he gets finished off. Terrible play there by the enemy team. Pushing one by one. But that is Tank Destroyer excellence right there using the dpm using cover perfectly right here even without a premium account look at that you don't need a premium account to be an excellent player it helps grind stuff though but 
It does make you better. But that is very excellent. Right there. So, game number two in the Tiger, And, instead of camping back this time, we're gonna go and push forward. Well, I won't, but help will. Because he can play this thing and I don't care. So here, the enemy Tiger pushing forward as well. He's not paying attention to his surroundings. And he takes a shot for it. Now, this is a very weird battle where the medium tanks camp in the back. And the tank destroyer is currently at the front fighting. And that enemy Tiger is just not doing it right. Perfect awareness here, bad awareness from the enemy Yagtig, and that is going to be the difference. Because remember, the difference between you getting a good battle or a bad battle, it's not the tank, it's you. I mean, obviously the tank being good can help you, but it won't be the deciding factor in most cases. If you can pick your fight well, if you know what you're doing, just like is happening right here with the enemy Yagtig, is completely helpless, he's getting absolutely demolished right here. Same tank completely different class of skill right here and obviously he's gonna go down and help is still on full hp playing aggressively and that's what you want to do right you want to get the shots that the enemy can't get towards you and now clear it out there are two enemies behind but there are a lot in front the enemy mediums are awful at this game that are camping in a corner one of the mediums even pushed through the entirety of the city and here comes the Borsig just rushing out in the open obviously he could <coughs> jeez that Borsig's so bad he made he almost made me die that Borsig is so bad he could have known that the Yagtiga was there if he paid attention right the Yagtiga wasn't spotted but he could know that he's there by the Yagtiga being spotted previously and then anticipating where the Yagtiga is gonna go and the same with this Astron he knows the Arctic is up there. He knows he would have to get out, but he didn't. The WZ would have been low enough for the Astron if he was reloaded to fight him and kill him, but he just decides to stare and get completely discombobulated by the Arctic. And now the 50 TP pushes forward into the Arctic, or something that you should never do. The only way to fight this thing effectively is from behind. If you're in front of it, 4000 DPM is going to mince even the best of vehicles, and this is terrible right here and he doesn't have any support either i mean he had a medium tank somewhere around the other side but that medium decided to engage the uh, t26 and not actually help out and that guy just went from full hp to zero without help getting a single point of damage done towards him like this is how you perfect a vehicle like this one game passive one game active watch it again Look at the replay. What is the steps that he's making right here? Think. Don't just don't just listen to what I'm saying. You probably don't anyway. But also watch the decisions. Try to think. What are the decisions that have been made here? Right? Why did he go precisely here? Why did he go up the hill? Why did he go around the hill? For example, all those kind of things. If you start thinking about those things, you are going to get very good at this game. Right? Because if you don't think in battle, no amount of videos is gonna make you better, right? You gotta think. You gotta use your brain in every single battle. Because every single battle is different, and every single battle requires you to be at the best of your game to play quite well. And games like this obviously also require a very submissive enemy team that uh, just lays down and says, take me. But yeah, the first game was passive. This one's active, it works for both. And the Tiger. It can be played really well. We're at six kills already, and the seventh will follow very soon. Because the Chimera, what is he gonna do? He has half the DPM of the Arctiger, and also almost half the hit points. So the amount of chances he has to winning this is about 2%, and he bounces off again. The only place he can really pen also is the lower plate, and here he tries to run at least. So, kudos. But that is the one thing he can do. Try to get behind the Arctiger, attack it from behind. So help is now gonna go straight after him. The Arctica bounces it. again, another shot, and that's it. So, Jesus, that is good. Get the Arctica if that's what you're into. I'm not, but the Arctica is in the right hands. An excellent vehicle, and thank you very much for sending in those replays, and thank you for watching. Bye.